Question from Wananda. What's your advice to someone new to crypto about not getting too stressed about all the changing narratives? That's a great one because you're going to get stressed, Wananda. It's kind of it's part of the space, but you can do stuff to to mitigate that stress. Um, the first thing I tell anybody who's new to crypto, Web3 or blockchain technology is to educate themselves. So the, the first thing you want to do is find the things that confuse you and find someone or some sort of material that can educate you on what you're trying to figure out. So one, you need to have the knowledge to understand what you're dealing with. Because once you understand the beast, you'll be able to navigate uh, within that realm without getting so stressed out because the the peripheral problems that you're running into, the small stuff that's giving you a headache are gonna take away from your ability to learn the bigger stuff and to pay attention uh, to the market in a way that will keep you up to date with everything that's going on. So kind of a blanket statement there. Uh, Wananda, I would say one, educate, uh, find a group of friends, possibly look for uh, people who are willing to educate you. There's always an individual that will know a little bit more than you. And a lot of the times there's gonna be individuals that know a lot a bit more, but they don't really have the time to be teaching uh, so much. So the, it's really good to buddy up. I'm a big proponent to the buddy up system in this space. Find a friend that knows a little more, learn along the way. Uh, and then also make sure that you target a sector of this industry that you're interested in and focus on that. So your foundation is security, uh, education, best practices of blockchain technology in general and, and, navigating this space, right? How to use a wallet, the shit you shouldn't do to lose your money, uh, common scams, uh, you know, how the technology works at at least a base level, understanding that and going, okay, I understand the different types of tokens. I understand, you know, what, what a wallet is. And uh, I understand maybe you can go a little deeper into, you know, different aspects of this entire realm. But the key is, is having that good solid foundation and then targeting what you really want. So if it's NFTs, then you need to go full born NFTs, ignore uh, any of the, the side trading, scalping perps, uh, any of the, the D apps or any of the DeFi stuff and just stick with the art and go, okay, I really wanna learn the art. And I wanna know why art hits and why art will be popular and uh, why it's important on chain. And then I'll start monitoring projects and I'll look for a project that I think is gonna win. Uh, that would be my my advice to you is just really focus on something that you want to learn and have a really good foundation uh, before you start doing that. Absolutely. I love that approach. And kind of a good follow up question um, from Sabrina. How do you know if something is not bullshit? Yeah, that's that's a tough one because there's a lot of like blatant indicators, uh, but those indicators are only blatant to me because I've been here so long uh, to a new person. It could be almost impossible to know uh, because they've gotten so smart in the way that they're scamming people these days and uh, the people who are rugging and so on and so forth. They've gotten it figured out to the point. I mean, we've just seen a prolific individual who came through the Polygon ecosystem and I mean, spaces every day amassed a big following, but it was all snake oil. I mean, even the people in the spaces were botted. Uh, the discords were botted. All of this shit was going on and it was so real seeming that to a new person, they would think they've stumbled upon a gold mine. Um, so the key there is, I'd say human factor is massive, right? So when you're in a server, we'll just use NFTs, for example, because it's very easy uh, to kind of use as uh, our example here. Um, when you're in a server, it's gonna be really important base level. You can go to the side of Discord and you can click the user profile and click info, I think it is, or uh, their profile button. And it will say when the accounts are made. And if you go through a Discord and you look and you see most of the accounts have been made within say the last week, month, last three months, the last six months, you can guarantee those people are most likely bots, right? So that's just one like real world example is that you can go through and check the validity of the individuals that are participating in that project by looking at account um, account uh, uh, life, sorry, account life. So seeing how long that account has been alive and made. Um, you also have to kind of look at how people are speaking, the interactions are the authentic, et cetera. That's one way of doing it. Um, the other way is finding reputable projects that are already very mainstream. So for example, use a very, uh, 
obvious one, like let's say Board Ape Yacht Club, right? Everyone knows who they are. They know Yuga's Discord. Um, most of the stuff going on in there, if it's by verified apes, if if they if Yuga themselves tweet about it, it's going to probably have some legitimacy to it. So you want to look for these things that are kind of daisy chained to pre existing founders, creators, uh, personalities in the space uh, that provide authenticity to what they're doing. That's one way of doing it. Um, the other way is just, again, time in the trenches is being here and experiencing it and getting burned a couple times and learning, but making sure that uh, you <laughs> that you keep track. We keep logs, right? In day trading, we keep logs to say, okay, this is why I, w I had a, a profitable PL. This is why this is my mentality of when I entered this trade and when I exited this trade. We do that because the human brain has a real hard time of keeping track of thousands of trades potentially. And if you forget something, you can go back and read it. So when you learn something in this space, it can be very beneficial to jot it down and say, this is why I did it. This was the date that I did it. Um, and I'm not going to make this mistake again. And if you're ever having a question about something you're about to do, you can go back to your log and go, I know I messed up something. Why did I mess up? Oh, that's why. Okay, this is throwing a red flag. Okay, I'm not going to do this because I made this mistake before. So try not to ever repeat the same mistake twice.